Hey, hello, and welcome to my front porch jam. Hope you're doing well. Doing well here. Been a nice day. Did a little celebrating. Um, and tonight is cruise in night. So you will hear some cars in the background, most likely burning rubber. Um, and there's been quite a, a, quite a crowd tonight. Um, I would say a crowd that is really partying it up tonight. Just let me tell you. So you I don't know, it's kind of quiet now, but here a little bit ago, it was uh, out of control. Anyways, uh, on today's show, we are going to look at Ho Hotel Yorba by the White Stripes. Um, we will uh, break this down and play it and then come back and do some song and artist facts. So, without further ado, this is a relatively simple song. There's um, uh, really nothing too challenging in it, um, but it's uh, a lot of fun to play, and uh, it, I love the White Stripes, so there's that too. But anyways, let's go ahead and have a look at the chord chart here and talk about this one for a moment. <clears throat> for this one, what we are looking at, um, and I think I may have... Okay, hold on a second. Let me get my my stuff together here I'm having some minor technical difficulties there we go I think I'm good now yes okay all right so what we're looking at here uh, starts out on a G there's a little uh, sort of little turnaround a little walk-up thing he does there at the beginning of the song I am leaving it out tonight but uh, you can call it up and, and check that out if you want but anyway I'm just gonna start out on the G so something like that then you'll kind of fade into the I was watching with one eye on the other side. So that's G. And then goes into C on the other side. Hat and then to D. Fifteen people telling me to move. I got moving on my mind. So really simple. C or G, C, D, G. Um, then it repeats that again. I found shelter with some thoughts turning wheels around. Said 39 times that I love you to the beauty I have found. So that's just, uh, again, G, C, D, G, right back to it. And then the chorus, same thing, except for there's one little note on the chorus. It is right here. Um, there's a, a kind of a quick turnaround, G, F, G. And if you want to just play the G there instead, if that turnaround is giving you problems, then don't worry about that. But anyways, the way that goes is, um, so also on the chorus, you can kind of do the one, two, three, four. So you don't have to, but you can just do the. Well, it's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. The elevator. That's a, you know, that kind of one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Like all downstrokes, you can do that if you want to. Um, but it's that, and then it goes to C. The hotel, yo, I'll be glad to see you later. All they got inside is vacant. And here's where the the good vacant C. Well, I gotta do it in time here. Got inside is vacant. So. So it's G F G, but you don't have to play that. Um, you can, if you if that's tough because that can be a little bit difficult. Um, but anyways, uh, if you don't play that, just play the G and it'll sound okay. So then it goes to the instrumental break, and um, that is just same old thing. G C D G. At same, just kind of sing the lyrics in your head when you're playing it. If you don't have anybody accompanying you or anything, just to keep time. Just kind of sing the lyrics in your head. Right, then uh, it just goes right back to it. The next verse, same thing, all over again. Then when it goes to the to the bridge, um, that comes out of the instrumental break there. So it's um, here. You just play the chords. Might sound silly for me to think childish thoughts like these, but I'm so tired of acting tough, and I'm gonna do what I please. Let's get married. Get a big by a priest. So you just just like that, right? So nice and easy. And then at the outro, um, you just it changes on the last chorus. It changes to and it's four, five, six, seven. Grab the umbrella. Grab a hold of me, cause I'm your favorite fella. All they got inside is vacancy. And it does this little. So that's G C. G, D, G. And on the G, um, what you can do here, um, since it's kind of fast, you can go. 
or even just or you can just even hit the single string if you want so you don't have to play the full G chord you can just hold your finger down on the first string third fret and so you can do like that or you can do something like that it doesn't really matter too much but that little outro there you can just kind of throw that on at the end so with all of that said I think we are ready to uh, to do this so grab a drink of my cold beverage I'll be right back with some um, song and artist facts after we rock this out so let's go do it I was watching with one eye on the other side Had 15 people telling me to move I got moving on my mind And I found shelter In some thoughts turning wheels around There's 39 times that I love you To the beauty I have found Well, it's one, two, three, four Take the elevator at the hotel Yo, I'll be glad to see you later The got inside is vacancy Down by the lake Got a dirty old road leading up to the house I wonder how long it will take We're alone Sitting on the front porch of the out of home Stomping our feet on the wooden boards Never gonna worry about locking the doors With well, one, two, three, four Pick the elevator at the hotel You'll be all be glad to see you later What they got inside is vacancy Me to think childish thoughts like these But I'm so tired of acting tough And I'm gonna do what I please So let's get married In a big cathedral by a breeze Cause if I'm the man that you love the most You could say I do at least Well it's one, two, three, four Take the elevator at the hotel Yo, I'll be glad to see you later But they got inside is vacancy And it's four, five, six, seven Grab the umbrella, grab a hold of me Cause I'm your favorite fella All they got inside is vacancy Alright, that was Hotel Yorba by the White Stripes uh, As covered by me on my front porch So I hope you like that um, White Stripes have always been one of my favorite bands One of my favorite concerts of all time um, And uh, if you... We're not uh, around at that time, or you didn't see them in concert or anything like that. If you're familiar with them and you know how they play um, stripped down music the way that they do and everything, uh, it is notable that they most definitely did not have any additional support of any kind on stage. Um, and it was just the two of them. And at some points in time, Jack White was playing keyboards and guitar, so fretting the guitar and letting the chords ring out, and playing with his left hand on the guitar neck right hand on the keyboard, and singing at the same time, amongst other things. So, fascinating. Great show. Anyways, um, so let's talk a bit about the band and the song. So, the Hotel Yorba. It's one of the White Stripes' early hits, blending their signature garage rock style with folksy energy inspired by Woody Guthrie. Interesting. Released in 2001, the song centers around a real, somewhat infamous hotel in Detroit, Michigan. The Hotel Yorba itself, located at 4020 Lafayette Boulevard, in case you want to look it up, um, was a dilapidated building in a rough part of town. Of course, it says was. I didn't check beforehand to see if it was still standing, so it sounds like it has been de demolished, perhaps. Um, so, uh, it, so it was a dilapidated building in a rough part of town, serving as a symbol of the transient and marginalized life. The hotel's gritty reality contrasts sharply with the upbeat, carefree nature of the song, creating an intriguing tension. Jack White, who grew up in Detroit, had heard about the hotel throughout his life, um, and it became a source of inspiration. The song's creation reportedly began when Meg White showed Jack a drum beat she had come up with. Um, and an interesting note, she's... Uh, while she's, uh, you know, by the books in terms of records sold and money made, a very, very successful drummer. Interesting to note that she really doesn't, I mean, some people, a lot of, a lot of drummers will say that she doesn't even know how to play drums. 
because um, there's really no fills or anything. It's just this, you know, steady beat and, um, and all that. But, hey, you can't argue with success. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so anyways, um, Jack quickly wrote the song around the drum beat, um, recording a version in room 206 of the hotel itself, capturing an authentic live atmosphere. Uh, not as cool as my porch, but that's pretty cool. Um, along with this, a cover of Loretta Lynn's Rated X was also recorded at the hotel. Loretta Lynn would later work with Jack White on her Grammy-winning 2004 album, Van Leer Rose, which has some pretty cool uh, songs on it. Uh, lyrically, the song carries a bit of Jack White's cryptic storytelling, which often leads fans to speculate about deeper meanings. On one line, I said 39 times that I love you remains a mystery. Uh, maybe it's an arbitrary number, but it may also reference... Alfred Hitchcock's film, The 39 Steps. Uh, another interpretation of the song limits it to the Woody Guthrie philosophy of writing songs that make people feel good. So, anyways, that's a good philosophy to have, make songs that feel make people feel good. I would say that's probably good advice. <clears throat> so, the upbeat, country-tinged melody reflects this lighthearted, optimistic spirit. So, okay. It reflects an optimistic spirit, I should say. Uh, there's also a hint of sarcasm and detachment in White's delivery, particularly in lines like, All they got inside is vacancy, which subtly transforms the physical hotel into a metaphor for emptiness or loneliness. Um, some interpretations see this as Jack expressing feelings of alienation or the transient nature of relationships, further by the fact that the hotel, Yorba, housed parolees and functioned as low-income housing, a far cry from the more glamorous associations of the word hotel. So, uh, the song had success in the UK. Um, they were an American band. Um, the White Stripes gained recognition in the UK, and Hotel Yorba became their first UK hit. The accompanying music video, which was the band's first, was filmed outside the hotel after they were denied permission to film inside. That's interesting. Um, according to Jack, he was banned from the hotel for life, <laughs> which adds a bit of folklore to the uh, song's story. I guess it does. The video features Tracy May Miller, Jack's friend and a member of his earlier band, Two Star Tabernacle, as the woman he married in the clip. Interesting. Historical and cultural context. Um, although the song is simple on the surface, it carries an undercurrent of melancholy and restlessness, feelings that might be linked to the way White sees the hotel as a metaphor. For many, the Hotel Yorba represents a temporary stop, a place for people on the fringes of society. Um, in the same way, the song hints the fleeting nature of connections and desire for something more permanent or meaningful. Overall, Hotel Yorba showcases Jack White's unique ability to transform an ordinary, um, even unsavory place into a compelling narrative filled with both hope and mystery. It remains one of the White Stripes' signature songs, embodying the raw, minimalist sound and quirky storytelling. Uh, the White Stripes were an influential American rock duo formed in 1997 in Detroit, Michigan by Jack White and Meg White. Their music, characterized by its raw simplicity and blend of garage rock, blues, and punk, played a significant role in the garage rock revival of the 2000s. The duo's distinctive sound was heavily shaped by their stripped-down instrumentation, with Jack on guitar, vocals, and various other instruments, and Meg on drums, uh, without a bass player, which was uncommon for rock bands at the time. Yes, indeed. It was definitely uncommon. Um, and it was incredibly cool. That's what I think. Uh, love it. Love it, and uh, there's, there was no other like them before or since, in my estimation. In the early years, Jack White was already a part of the Detroit music scene through his work with several local, local bands, like Goober and the Peas, um, formed the White Stripes um, after marrying Meg White in 1996. Meg had just began playing drums, and Jack found her minimalist, almost childlike approach to drumming refreshing. The duo's decision to perform as the White Stripes, named after Meg's love for peppermints, uh, was rooted in their fascination with childlike simplicity. They also created a unique visual identity, consistently using a strict color scheme of red, white, and black, which became a signature aesthetic throughout their careers. When I saw them in concert, um, along with her drum set, of course, was all red. You probably seem to know that already if you're a fan. 
Um, but interesting to note, and it had a the front face of the drum, uh, the kick drum was just a, a giant peppermint, so it looked like a big giant peppermint, right? And um, when they when I went to see the show, when the roadies brought the drum set out, the drum set got applause. So it was just so distinct and uh, recognizable. So definitely uh, really on to something there. I think everything about their marketing and and the appearance of the band and things like that just perfection all the way around. So. Just saying. <clears throat> so, um, the early years saw them perform at local venues, uh, starting with their first live performance at the Gold Dollar Bar in 1997. The duo's involvement in the underground Detroit garage rock scene introduced them to bands like the Dirt Bombs and the Gories. Their first two singles, Let's Shake Hands and Lafayette Blues, were released on vinyl by Italy Records, a small Detroit-based label, further cementing their place in the local music scene. The White Stripes released two albums in the late 1990s, but it was their third album, White Blood Cells, in 2001 that catapulted them to international fame. The album, with hits like Fell in Love with a Girl, great song, uh, was critically acclaimed for its blend of raw energy and innovative songwriting. It became a pivotal album in the garage rock revival, drawing attention to the other indie bands at the time. The band's fourth album, Elephant, in 2003, included one of their biggest hits, Seven Nation Army, a song whose riff has become one of the most recognizable in modern rock. Go to any thing, any event, and you'll hear that played. Any sporting event, what have you. Um, I mean, you name it. So, um, Elephant earned the band their first um, Grammy Awards and solidified their place as one of the leading rock acts of the 2000s. Indeed. <clears throat> so, the evolution of the band in final years... The White Stripes continued to evolve musically, with their fifth album, Get Behind Me Satan, in 2005, showcasing a more experimental approach. Um, got some great songs on that, too. Blue Orchid, I think, was one on there that was amazing. Uh, Jack White incorporated more piano, marimba, and acoustic elements, moving away from the heavy guitar-driven sound of their earlier work. This album, while divisive amongst critics, and who cares what critics think, demonstrated the duo's willingness to push creative boundaries. Their final album, Icky Thump, in 2007, marked a return to their blues-inspired roots and was lauded for its strong song songwriting and musicianship. Songs like the title track, Icky Thump, highlighted their continued ability to create raw, powerful rock anthems. After touring extensively and releasing a live album and a documentary under Great White Northern Lights in 2009, the band went on an extended hiatus and officially disbanded in 2011. That's sad. Maybe they'll do a reunion tour someday. That'd be awesome. Not betting on it, though. Um, White Stripe's minimalist approach to music, focusing on simplicity and composition and performance, uh, set them apart from the more polished sounds of the mainstream rock at the time. That was one of the things that made them really cool, by the way. Um, their strict adherence to their red, white, and black visual aesthetic, combined with their love um, of the number three, a recurring motif in their work, added to the mystique that surrounded the band. Uh, Jack and Meg White famously claimed to be siblings for most of their career, which was later revealed to be a playful ruse as they were, in fact, a divorced couple. So this is his ex-wife. So that's very interesting that that worked out. Um, the White Stripes won six Grammy Awards during their career and released six studio albums. Two of their albums, White Blood Cells and Elephant, are regularly cited as some of the greatest albums of all time, with Elephant re featuring on Rolling Stone's 500 Greatest Albums of All Time list. So, the, the band also influenced countless modern rock and indie bands, not only through their sound, but through their DIY ethos and their low-fidelity recording style. Despite being nominated for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2023, they were not inducted that year. And they definitely should have been, so let's have that vote held again. Uh, Jack White continued to remain a significant figure in the music world after the band's dissolution, leading other projects like the Rockin' Tours and the Dead Weather, and pursuing a successful solo career. Their legacy as one of the most important and innovative rock bands of their era uh, remains intact, with their music continuing to inspire new generations of musicians. So, that's what I know about the White Stripes. But, yeah, definitely, uh, if you haven't or you don't know about the White Stripes, Check them out um, because it, it just the raw stripped down energy of their music and just having a two piece band with no 
no extra accompaniment, no nothing, um, is fantastic. And of course, they use old school analog recording techniques. Um, and uh, I, they have one album, I forget which one it was. One of them was recorded in just the living room of a house with like a four track recorder. Um, stuff like that. So uh, this is crazy. And then they did, and they put it out in some millions of records. And it's like literally just they just sit down in their living room and record it. Um, and then there it goes. And it's so that's just to me that's kind of crazy to think about that. But anyways, um, that's the way it goes. So that is all I have for you tonight. So cheers to you. I'm gonna go and uh, uh, like I do at the end of so many of these shows. I'm going to go sign off and go make some tacos. I'm kind of hungry for tacos tonight. So I had some earlier, but I think I'm going to make a few more tonight. So anyways, I will talk to you later. Have a good good evening, afternoon, morning, whenever you're watching this, and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.